that walked in with him today. Amen. This all points to the last statement in his biography. It says, Reverend Asher believed that all of these things, all of these achievements mean absolutely nothing without the love and provision of God in his life. Amen. He strives to be an example of the Christ that lives within him so that others may come into the saving knowledge of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is more important than any other fact that I can share with you. Because the truth of the matter is, his accomplishments not only would mean nothing, they would be nothing because they would not exist. All right. So I want to thank you again for your hospitality. I want to thank you for inviting us again. But most importantly, if you don't remember anything about who my husband is, I want you to remember who he brings with him. Amen. Amen. Come on. Send us into the swine 
that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herod went down violently down the sea place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Amen. So those who fed the swine fled. And they told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Amen. And they were afraid. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I come here to say publicly what I've already said in private, and that is I cannot do this without you. Yeah. Yeah. I need your power, your strength, your anointing that makes preaching easy. So that someone may ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Continue on this journey with you and go into the will of God. Satan, we declare that you have no control over this moment. So Father, have your own way in this place. Do what you do best, and that's just be God. Move me out of the way and have your own way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And when he had come out of the boat, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. I want to take an interesting text today. The title for this sermon, Do You Really Want This? During my two visits to Shiloh, I've been able to glean from conversations with members and questions asked of me what type of pastor and ministry shallow believes that they desire. During my last visit, an interview with the pastoral search committee, the interview concluded with this question. Do you have any questions for us as a committee? I paused considered all that I had learned through observation and the ability to just listen, and sensing that the day had grown long, stated that I had no additional questions mm. for the committee. As I prepared for today's sermon, that final moment with the pastoral search committee began resonating in my mind as God told me that even though I didn't have any additional questions, there was one that God desired me to ask, and it is simply this. Do you really want this? I heard the question with the understanding that this is an open-ended and potentially loaded question and retorted with, well, Lord, what is this? I already knew the answer to the question, and in my desire to, be, to avoid the assignment or preach a sermon in which that this was a blessing or faithful reward for faithfulness, God reminded me that God did not call me to preach the easy sermon. There you go. Come on, preacher. So on this day, I stand here not as a pastoral candidate, Hallelujah. but as God's vessel to preach the words placed in my mouth. Amen. I'm very impressed in my spirit to get to ask the question, do you really want this? So what is the this? The this being raised is do you really want to be a church that operates fully in the will of God? Or are you content living in the spiritual mediocrity of modern day church culture? You better preach that. Words that I often hear tossed around casually and carelessly in meetings, conversations with my preaching contemporaries, lifted in church conferences are evangelism, spiritual and numerical growth, outreach, kingdom building and kingdom expansion, the move of the spirit, staying in tune with God, but the question remains, as you consider the direction that you want to move in, is do you really want this? These words and ideals sound good, look good on paper, and are all the right things to say. But as you really consider what this means to be a church that operates in the will of God, you have to ask yourself, do you really want this? But what you must understand is that it is much easier to operate in the spiritual mediocrity of modern day church culture than it is to operate in the will of God. Modern day church culture does not challenge you or push you 
but allows you to run church independent of Christ yeah. as a glorified social club in which as long as you make budget year after year, Come on now. it's your weekly spiritual high, then God no longer becomes a priority. Mm. Modern day church culture allows you to play the harlot with the world, what? never taking a stand against injustice and as to not ruffle any verbs. Mm. Modern day church culture allows you to condone and excuse sin in the name of tolerance, despite what the Bible says, without understanding that the small sins that you excuse and condone are often attached to big demons. Modern day church culture runs churches for its big business, sacrificing ideals as such as holiness and righteousness on the altar of the world for the sake of unhealthy church growth and worldly church culture has, has caused the church to become an introverted institution and losing its focus on what matters to God's heart to fulfill the lust of the fat flesh and the lust of the eyes. Again, do you really want to be a church that operates fully in the will of God? Or are you content living in spiritual mediocrity of modern day church culture? Do you really want all that God has for you as a church or are you content to remain stagnant? Come on, preacher. Do you preacher. really want to see people's lives change? That's right. Do you really want to impact the city of Chester? Come on. Or will you continue to ignore the cries and the needs of a people as you make your Sunday morning or occasional weekly visit? Are you willing to fight against the battles found in the spiritual, social, and political arenas against injustice and apathy? Or are you content to dwell in the safety of your village disengaged from the evils that you will engage as a pro after church? Do you really want this? Shallow has been blessed by God with poverty, ministry, gifts, talents, brilliant creative minds. But do you really want the responsibility that goes along with all that God has blessed you with thus far and desires to give you? Do you really want this? To say that you really want this means that you're willing to disengage from the safety of the folk that we call church for the sole purpose of reaching the lost. Yes. To say that you want this really means that you have to change the way that you do church to effectively impact the lives of the community, to be the beacon of light in the city of Chester. To say that you really want this means that you have to go places that will make you feel uncomfortable so that you can offer life to the spiritually dead. To say that you really want this means that you are engaged and welcome people from the tombs of life. Do you really? Want this. Jesus fully understood this question would pose challenges to the church and individual Christians of the future that have become content and remaining stagnant and comfortable and perceived with stability of past success because of how God had blessed them. Yeah. However, what we must understand is that the God that we serve is a living and moving God. Our first introduction to God in the book of Genesis was not one of God who was still, but one who was moving across the face of the water. If you really want to operate fully in the will of God, you've got to learn how to operate in the flow of God. Being so in tune with the Spirit that you are willing to move Yeah. 
the challenge is moving when God says go. Yes. When Jesus gives the order to cross the other side, will you have enough faith and fortitude to move? Or will you allow tradition and comfort to keep you where you are? Will you hear the command from God to move? Will you fight God to the nail? Or will you say, God, I trust you. Let's cross to the other side. These six words can literally shake a church at its core and change its DNA or physical makeup. Let's cross to the other side. And yet the question remains, do you really want this? Can you move when God says move? Or do you have to pray about what God told you to do? And here's what's so interesting about prayer about what God told you to do. Who are you praying to? If God said move, why are you praying to God? A modern day church culture. Because when you tap into the flow of the Spirit, you have to be able to change what you're doing, even in the middle of successful ministry. Jesus understood being in the middle of the flow. When you look at his ministry, he never remained in one place too long. He was always on the move because he understood his ultimate end game was not.
disciples are. All right. In the middle of trusting and believing yeah. and moving when God says move, yeah. facing a storm, yeah. God that you don't want it if you yeah. want to make it to the next week. Yeah. And I had an issue with this because I've been there. Mm -hmm. I had an issue with facing a storm in the middle of transition. And so God told me this. God will sometimes take us through a storm that all of our life's experience will not equip us for it. So that we can learn how to totally believe and completely depend on it. Because when God is taking us, we cause a number of things that we never had before. And we cause us to trust less in our own. Yeah. All right. 